Hi guys, this is Matty Ace, and this is another flying tutorial about the fighter plane and the trench fighter loadout. Now for the most time when we learn something, we learn from other people. Other people that knows about the subject more than we do ourselves. Shit. But in order for this to work yeah, properly, you have to make sure hurt. that you are learning from people that actually knows what they are doing. There are plenty of people out there that are good at talking about things, but just because somebody is good at articulating, phrasing, or just simply putting words together, does not mean that he can actually teach you about the subject that he is talking about. Now, several years ago, a guitar teacher of mine said this, Good players learn from good players, bad players learn from bad players, and I think that applies to gaming as well. So now first thing first, if you haven't already got your settings correct for flying, then make sure that you do that. I will put two links in the description that will guide you through that process, and even if you're not playing on PC like I do, I think the information in the videos can be very easily translated into the two console versions of this game. So now there are several different factors that will decide how successful you are going to be in a fighter plane. One of them, for example, is decision making. Knowing when to back off when you are taking damage, and understanding the risk you're taking when you're going up against an enemy that is actually shooting back at you. The fighter plane cannot tank damage, ah, you need much. to make sure that you can avoid it. And you do that by maneuvering. Now sometimes when you see a pilot flipping and turning in all kinds of directions, it might actually be rather difficult to decide whether or not the pilot knows how to control the plane, or if he's just doing some random, I have no idea what I'm doing maneuvers. However you flip and turn and roll your plane, make sure that this is something that you can benefit from. Now in the videos that I recommended for you that will be in the description, one of the suggestions that I'm making for you there is to go on an empty server and just figure out how to get your settings right and figure out how to control the plane without anybody interfering. And one of the oh, things that you can do there is that you can decide on a fixed target somewhere on the ground or maybe a building or something and see if you can do some similar maneuvers that you see me doing here before I'm trying to take out these gunners on the behemoth. Now obviously your goal is to make yourself as hard of a target as possible in order to avoid incoming fire, but you want to do this while still being able to land your own darts on whoever you are going for. Uh huh. You want to play. You want to play. Alright, alright. I'll play with you. So you notice in this situation how I decide to back off when I see the enemy pilot switching seats. However, I damaged his left wing, and that means that his plane is not going to fly straight without him piloting it. So all I need to do is turn away quickly, and then turn right back at him again, and by the time I have him in my crosshair, he is back in the first seat, trying to repair his attack plane. Now obviously the tail gun is not as dangerous as it used to be, but it is still pretty damn potent. And in an upcoming video, I'm going to show you that it can still be used just like before. Now one of the most important factors in your decision making and your approach is understanding your opponents. And one of the most dangerous opponents for a pilot is of course the QF-1 AA. Haha, <laughs> I calculated for his when he had to reload. And now there's another one. Now just like with all stationary automatic weapons, the QF-1 can only fire for a certain amount of time before it goes into a cooldown. Now I noticed that this guy is already shooting at me by the time that I'm making my first turn. 
But since it's not hitting me, I'm able to keep maneuvering, and by the time that I am close enough to actually be shot down, he can no longer fire. <laughs> of course, the danger with taking out the AA that way is that if he actually lands enough shots at you, you're not gonna be able to maneuver at all. Any turns or flips you're trying to do will be cancelled, and your plane is just going to go forward, shaking in a way that you cannot control. However, what is even worse than that is that the anti-air is also going to pull you down towards the ground. It's so fucking retarded when you when that happens. Like I'm pulling up, but now going up against a manned anti-air with the fighter plane is what I would consider high risk, low reward. Of course, the reward would be considered higher if you would actually take the anti-air out. But you're not gonna do that. All you're going to do is kill the guy using it. Oh shit. Now obviously there are a lot of us out there that wish that the air-to-air -air aspect of the game would have been a little bit more interesting. But we all have to start somewhere, and uh, one of the things that you want to learn first and foremost is uh, to be able to maintain your aim on the very moving target that is another plane. Now this is actually rather tricky, even though the machine gun of the fighter plane is uh, rather fast firing and has rather fast uh, or high velocity. In many situations, you actually do have to put your aim slightly in front of whatever plane you're shooting at. Not nearly as much as with the attack plane, but still enough so that it might actually throw you off. I'm doing good, uh, thank you for asking. How about you? Come on, die, die, die. There we go. If only there were some more people. Now the thing about flying is that even if you are a very good and very experienced player when it comes to being an infantry player for example or from other games than Battlefield, whatever skill set you have with you when you start flying, you normally can't benefit all that much from it. So unless you've been flying a lot in other Battlefield games, you probably have to learn pretty much from scratch. Now to be fair, Battlefield 1 is not in any way as uh, crazy hard to fly in as in some of the other games that I've been playing in the past. Now the skill ceiling in Planetside 2 for example was a lot higher, but the game mechanics in that game was such that it was a lot more interesting and a lot more fun to actually practice outside of just playing on a regular server. And because of that, us dedicated pilots developed a much higher skill than we have seen at least so far in Battlefield 1. So now is this game going to get a competitive scene when it comes to flying? I don't know. I kind of doubt it, but I mean, to be fair, it might have already happened without me knowing about it. Now, wherever you want to go with your flying, I hope that this video has helped you. My name is Matthias, and I want to thank you all for watching. <laughs> the train is hacking. I mean, a cheater could be in a train, of course. Hit. Nice. No, 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 anti no, no, no. Yes. There's a heavy tank on Charlie. Oh, I finally died. We have lost objective apples. Oh, I didn't kill the. Ah, darting is a bit different now, guys. 
Yeah, the trench is actually a lot better than it gets credit for. I just prefer the storm. Yeah. We have lost objective bottom. Yeah, the the sh the machine gun is stronger now. Oh come on! That Enemy armor train is on 